we all watch in horror and consternation what's going on in the United States. It is a time uh, to pull people together, but it is a time to listen. It is a time to learn what injustices continue despite progress uh, over years and decades. But it is a time for us as Canadians to recognize that we too have our challenges. What do you take from the silence? 20 seconds. Was it a stunt? What was the effect? For me, it's that a leader doesn't just talk. A leader has to listen, but most importantly, a leader has to feel. A leader has to feel what the people he leads feels. He doesn't have to have the same experience, but he has to understand their experience. I'll be back at midnight Eastern tonight. Our coverage continues, of course, with the man, D. Lemon and CNN Tonight. I think he's many of us right now. Good evening, by the way. I think he's many of us. Many of us are at a loss for words. When people ask me about, well, what do you think about, you know, this, or the president did that, or, and I don't really know what to say. And so I think, that's, I think he faced a conundrum in that moment that many people face. They don't know what to say. They don't want to say the wrong thing. They don't want to jump to conclusions. And then you're just sort of flummoxed because we've never really seen anything like this before. We've never been in this position. No, I mean, look, we've obviously we've had protests, we've had wrongful killings, we've had prosecutions that don't go the way they're supposed to go. Um, but there's just such a starkness in contrast and such a profound pain. See, I think people keep missing, not you, but people keep missing the pain. Right. They see the anger, they see the anger in the protests, and they judge the anger because, frankly, Don, it's easier to do. Um, it's easier to identify with. Everybody gets anger. Not everybody gets pain and hurt. Yeah. especially in a context like this. And I've never seen during this administration as stark a contrast, kind of close with what was going on on the border and putting kids in cages and him not giving a damn about that and lying about it and putting it on other people. But now these are all Americans you're dealing with. There's mm -hmm. no other unless an other you choose to create. Yeah. Pain and fear. Pain and, and fear. I, uh, listen, I know people who are afraid. They're, they see the people out on the streets. They're not afraid of the legitimate protesters, but they're afraid of the looters, even coming into their own homes, coming to, into their businesses. And there are many people who, who, who lived during the civil rights movement who faced the very same fear. I had Bernice King on the other night. Same fear when mobs would show up at her house, when they would burn crosses on her lawn, when their property would be damaged, when, they would, when, when black families would be in fear of being dragged out of their homes in the middle of the night. None of it is right. But what I'm saying is that we are gripped in fear right now and we don't know what to do on many, many different levels. And it's time for some understanding. No one wants to go back to the 1960s and we don't want to progress forward. We don't want to move forward without gaining some understanding of where we are in the moment and how we're going to change things. And that comes with everyone letting their guard down, having some empathy for the person that you don't really know about and listening and not just having, we always say, I, I'm sick of people saying, Chris, we do it all the time. Let's have a conversation. Well, where do you go after that conversation? Mm. And got to be some action, right? Right, because, you know, look, I think, I'm pretty sure I've had so many different quotes uh, in my head recently. But the uh, Tupac Shakur gave an interview where he eloquently said, um, I thought, you know, blacks have been asking, asking, asking for a long time. Let us in, let us in. Begging, 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 it's bad out here. Let us in, let us in. Uh, we ask and you don't let us in. You, we beg and you don't let us in. We start banging on the door because we need to get in. We can't stay out here. We're dying out here. Do you think we're going to keep asking at a certain point? Now, I know that sounds incendiary to people, um, but everything that has mattered in American history has happened because people got to a point where their desperation led them to action and they insisted things got better. That's, we've ne we've never done it by just a conversation and a pat on the back. It doesn't mean insurrection. It doesn't mean civil war. It, yeah. it means passion that fuels anger, that fuels but change. The, the thing is, Chris, it does mean insurrection. And I don't mean, I don't mean it in a way that people, let me, it means insurrection when people get tired and when, if no one listens. 
then it fuels insurrection. Do you, un- do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. After a while, people say, okay, look, I'm tired of this. I'm, st- I'm tired of it, and either you let me in, you understand me, I'm going to force my way into the conversation, force my way into the system, I'm going to demand that you let me into the house, meaning, I'm, talk- I'm talking about, you get, you get what I'm saying, the metaphorical house, and, I- and you- you're going to have to do it, and people aren't going to like it. So why can't we all figure out how to do it now, instead of an insurrection that happens because no one wants to change? And I think that what we've learned, you yeah. know, you and I aren't young anymore. You know, we've been seeing this for Speak a long... For well, you look young, but you're not. And we've been living this a long time. Yeah. And it's frustrating, and I understand people's frustration, because what we've learned is there is no solution. There are solutions. Yeah, a right. lot of different things have to happen. And it has to begin with a grassroots momentum that rewards people for capturing what they feel and punishing those who do not and leadership on the top and those in power who recognize the opportunity and the need. That's what, these, that's what, what you're looking at Seattle is all about right there. That is the, that's the grassroots. That's our future showing us, asking us, are you going to come with us? Are we going to have to drag you? Are you going to stay where you are? And then... And there's opportunity in that. that if, you exactly. wanna, if you want to be one of their leaders and you go out there and you show you get their issues and that you have a plan to do something, even if it's just one thing, right. you get their votes. Now yep. you're in power. Now, now you power. have a mandate. Yep. Thank you, sir.